building success is presented by IKEA and the Mariners building something special for this season and beyond. Look at what they have done since August 1st, 20 and 5, over six runs per game. I believe in July they were 10 games back of the division. And they have come storming back and now lead the American League West by a full game over the Rangers and Astros. And joining us in studio in his 17th season as one of the TV voices of the Seattle Mariners, Dave Sims. Good to see you, sir. Good to be here, Robert. Good to see you guys. Let's watch oh. you guys on the West Coast. Yeah, good to see you guys. We're glad <laughs> to, to have you. Uh, you're going to be meeting the team here because the yep. Mariners uh, have a series this weekend uh, against the New York Got Mets. Mets yep. How would you explain what this team has done since, as I said, they were 10 games back. Yeah. What has been the difference? You know, the pitching staff has been a constant. When you looked at the hitters and looked at their names and their resumes, they weren't performing. And we said, at some point, it's got to click. Mm -hmm. All these guys had great reputations as hitters, and now everything is working. It's, I mean, it really is that simple. And it happened with everybody coming together at the same time. Did it happen in that Orioles series? Was that kind of the moment it didn't it, hurt. <laughs> it didn't hurt. That, that's the game where Mullins hits the homer, robs right. the homer, and that right. was a tough loss. But right. was that the kind That of was the one of the points. Goal? I just think that over the course of time, it was building, building, building. And one guy would get hot. The next thing you know, another guy like Teo had a good month of June, cooled a little bit of July. He's hot as blazes right now. Cal's hitting the ball out of the ballpark now. J.P. Crawford. Ty, Ty France. France. Ty France is not having a classic Ty France yeah. year, but the last few weeks he's come on, so he's, and joined, JP he's joined the party. Hey, man, having him in the leadoff spot, uh, he's providing some pop this last yeah. couple, three days with home runs leading the game off, playing a great shortstop, and he's a leader that's got service. The manager talks mm -hmm. about, hey, when you talk about leadership, quiet leadership, a guy that um, – he, he rallies the guys around, and if the pitcher's in a little bit of a trouble, not only does Cal come out, but JP comes in, offers some, you know, hey, let's go. You know, or whatever, whatever he, he does add, it's been very effective. We always have the conversation, David, about best rotation in the game. Who has surprised you on the staff the most, watching them on a daily basis? Surprise. That's a good question because Luis is a stud. Do you know Bryce? That, you know Bryce right? Miller was the Bryce, I didn't know I didn't know Bryce Miller would be that good. I would have to say he'd be a surprise. I mean Logan Gilbert, you know what you're gonna get. George Kirby, New York guy. Uh, he's pumping fastball, stop at his own. Uh, Logan Gilbert, he's got an assortment of pitches. A lot of things he can rely on. Miller comes in fearless. Wu has come in fearless. Nasty. Uh, very. And I always give Pete Woodworth and his pitching staff a lot of credit. Their whole thing, hey, man, we're coming right after you and stay and don't even think about wavering. And then they've, they've added, some, added some pitches to their repertoire here and there. And, but basically, a lot of guys are just living at the top of their zone, fastball, that top rail, and uh, having a lot of success. Take me inside the depth of the bullpen, because when Seawald walks out the door, yeah. and Canzone's been good, and Rojas has been good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God, it's all come together. I mean, depth pieces, stars. But take at me the, inside at, the bullpen. At the back end, Munoz, if he gets the slider over, and he's starting to get that feel back for the slider, he's got the plus-plus fastball. He can be absolutely devastating. He was terrific last year setting up for Pauly. Uh, Matt Brash, another guy, he's got the great wipeout slider, top of the zone fastball. But then you got uh, Gabe Spire, who had a eh, lot of success in Kansas City, left-hander. He's had maybe one clunker in the entire, two clunkers the entire year. He's been getting guys out lefties and righties. Uh, Isaiah Campbell, big right-hander we brought up from uh, AA Arkansas. He, you can see his maturation happening right in front of you right now. Um, uh, Justin Topa oh, coming off a couple Saucedo. of elbows. Saucedo. I mean, Saucedo's the, the left-hander. Yeah. Yeah. Topa's the right-hander. Uh, he's got the big sweeper. He's got the good fastball. It can work inside. The whole group, and this is the third year where the bullpen has really been stellar, and it's just getting better every day. Saucedo's the lefty. You can also throw righty. And I want to ask <laughs> you a question. Okay, so take us inside the clubhouse or the dugout with this team because there's back of the baseball cards. Yeah. There's belief. But there is also a season where you hadn't performed. What what generated all that belief? You know, I, I think inner belief, and, and I don't think there was no panic. Yeah. You know, Taylor was struggling mightily. He was waving at every you know slider, sweeper, breaking ball, and he's that number, that strikeout rate has backed off a little bit, and he's making contact and he's putting the ball in play hard. So now you got him in a four-five spot or six spot, and that, that's a difference maker. When you, you throw him in after JP. And uh, Julio, and, and now you got and you got the 
Cal Raleigh, th this is a guy, he hurt us last year when he was with Toronto in the right. playoffs. He's a good player, man. He's really good. He's so played no, a better better outfield than I anticipated. So no panic, I guess. No, no, not at all. They also uh, seem to not concern themselves with the West, with the rest of the West. I was listening to Luis Castillo after the game, and he was. They were talking about taking over the top spot, and he said that'll that'll take care of themselves. Is that accurate? It's almost like a yeah. chip. Yeah, in terms of chip on the shoulder. Yeah, I don't know. No, I, I just think it's like a supreme confidence in 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 mm. all of their guys. I know that talking to Eugenio Suarez is playing a great third base. Stud. Right. Good vibes and only. A good time. vibes only. You know it, right? <laughs> One of the great smiles ever. Um, even back when things weren't going great in June, you say, "Hey, this team's together. We're going to be all right. We're going to be. We just got to stay with it." And Julio said this. You know, preaches the same thing. Take and you me look at. Go, I, I, go ahead. We've. Had, isn't it crazy, Seattle Mariners? We've talked. We've asked five, six questions. The guy at the oh, yeah. Julio. Yeah, what's he like? Come on, Stud. he's been around the Mariners Gre forever. Gregarious, funny, uh, knows every American Show me. It, every American idiom you can talk <laughs> to. He's got the it factor, doesn't he? Camera loves him, and he loves the camera. Yeah. And he's really good at it. Defensively, takes a lot of pride. I tell you what, he's a guy, and I remember Scott Service saying this, and some of the coaches. Oh, this is where he got me on that. Yeah, one. he told me. Uh, he got Fernando. And I went in the next day. I said, "Dude, man, I, you owe me one." He played that beautifully. I might have jumped the gun a little bit, but he—that was wow. a heck of a catch. But if he makes a mistake, he doesn't repeat mistakes often. He really doesn't. And I remember a couple of base running mistakes like last year. You don't see that now. Now he—he's special. Special. And when, when you're talking about enjoying baseball and watching somebody with five tools, wow. I mean, I get to watch this every night. So they've got two teams chasing them right now in the division, both a game back, the Astros and the Rangers. They're going to finish the season yeah. basically with, what, three, seven? Three, three yeah. at Texas, three at home with Houston, yeah. four at home with Texas. Yeah. That's a hey now. They've right dominated. There. I'll tell you what. <laughs> they've that dominated. It's like, hey, boys, Astros you better be ready. Here like we go. Robin <laughs> yeah, yeah, what do you think that's going to be like, that last? Let's get there first. Uh, you know, here today's August, what, 29th? Mm -hmm. We still got uh, two more games with the uh, A's. We'll see Ronnie and the boys in New York. Uh, we, we'll, we'll, when we get there, we get there. Have you held the try? Yeah, does it go That the, thing is heavy. Yeah, really? Do not mess around with that thing. I it was like, it's like, legit. and I went, whoa. Have you like uh, 10 yeah, pounds yeah, or yeah. Oh, oh, 20 pounds? It might, be, it might be 15, 20. Wow. And it comes in a couple of pieces. And I went and I said, nah, I'll have you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thank you very much. Oh, for my pleasure. Us. Thank You're you. One of our I, favorites. Well, I appreciate, appreciate that. Joining. My pleasure. Enjoy watching you guys on the West Coast. I usually catch it at the re-rack. Well, nice. thank you very much. Appreciate it. Dave Sims, voice of the Seattle Mariners. Mariners are rolling, and they'll be in town up in the Northeast this weekend to take on the Mets.